Deception. Today we're going to be talking about the metaverse. Since I've been talking about technology and how it can be over-consuming, it can be um, just like a lifeline instead of a tool or a research, you know, or we're using it just to research and we're using it wisely, it becomes all-consuming. Therefore, it becomes an idol before the Lord, right? And when the more time is spent going through all these social media sites, I know some of you use this technology for work, you know, and some of you use this technology because it's a resource for you to connect with other people around the world. It's it's the overuse and the overconsumption that can lead you into being intoxicated by the device. You're addicted to it. It's like one of those things where you cannot... Um, go without it and you're spending so much time on it that even some people are so isolated now they're not even coming out of their bedrooms they're just 100% gaming or on social media and they don't have an outward social reach out like real people they're not with real people anymore they're just in this social media and as my husband would call it can it be really social media or is it kind of anti-social in a sense because you're really not you know, it's not tangible. You're not touching anybody. Yeah, you're having conversations. Um, you're maybe sharing information with each other, pictures, these kind of things with people. And it becomes a, a, a resource for some people, but it can, becomes all-consuming for others. So imagine this two-dimensional social media turns into a three-dimensional metaverse. It's like, it's called, you know, some people call it, we're living, of course, is the universe. And this is the metaverse, where you actually become part of everything. So you create a whole new world for yourself inside this metaverse. You're able to have a place where you're living. You're buying all these things with cryptocurrency. You're um, inviting a you're making an avatar that's three-dimensional. So you see avatars now and they look kind of cutesy and cartoony, but they're going to be really realistic and look just like you. And you're inviting people into your your little new um, metaverse, right? And you're causing this whole life. You're driving cars, you're flying planes, you can go back into history, you can go anywhere you want to. You, I'm sure you can fly. You can, you know, do all these different things, right? And you're living in this world outside of the real world, the true connection with people, the true world that God created, right? This world here, yes, it's got a lot of heartache. Yes, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of suffering. But there's also a lot of beauty and a time to serve the Lord, right? By truly connecting with people and seeing them face to face and being there for people. So what will the metaverse add to this already consuming social media networks where everybody's completely plugged in and they're wearing, you know, these virtual reality glasses, you know, and you're, it kind of looks like goggles and it takes you to the places that you want to go. Maybe you're going to have coffee with somebody in the metaverse. Maybe you're going to have a business meeting and everybody's going to bring their avatars around the world and they're going to sit at a table and their avatars and everybody else is at home and they have these things on, right? And you're having these meetings at work. So when is it all consuming and too much where people don't want to take off these glasses, they don't want to take out these goggles, and they don't want to return to living life here in the universe, not the metaverse, right? To really disconnect, to go really connect with people. I'm going to let you see a lot of what is going on today. Now, this was a TED talk, talk done, and I believe it was in November of 2021. I think you are going to want to see this and how much more advanced it is than you could ever, ever, ever ever imagine because what they're showing you what they have now is 20 years more in advance so what they're giving out to society they have much more to give you so they to drip it in so it's not like wow this is totally outrageous but if they slowly give it to you 
little by little cartoony fun like the farm life that used to be and you used to have to you know wait to buy things to put in your farm and your gardens and different things like that and that was a really a popular thing and you can almost get consumed of it in it and now you're going to be buying a place a home you're going to be going places with people your little avatar friends and you're going to be going into shopping there you know buying and selling there you're going to be amazed so watch this so today i would like to talk to you about the future of immersive metaverse now before we dive into it what is actually a metaverse you probably have heard this word in the last couple of months so many times that you know you don't know where to run from it but let's see what the word metaverse means the word metaverse is made out of two parts the first is meta, which means beyond, future. And the second part is, is verse, which means the universe. So we're actually dealing here about, you know, with the future of the universe. Pretty big deal. But generally speaking, this word is meant to describe the future iteration of the internet, made up of persistent shared 3D virtual spaces linked into virtual universe. And for the first time ever in human history, virtual reality headsets, like I'm wearing right now, can completely mimic these senses by projecting stereoscopic light and creating the same 3D spatial environment around us, which tricks our brain completely into believing that what you see and where you are right now is actually real. Thanks to blockchain, you are able to own your digital possessions. Whether we're talking about avatars, cars, land, or anything else, or social media experience and identities. In social media, you don't own your identity. You own basically nothing. And the companies who own those data, they sell them, they monetize them, but you have no say in this process. This will change due to the blockchain and decentralization. The metaverse itself, the virtual reality metaverse itself, solves and you know, allows people to become independent from anywhere in the world, be creative and have virtual jobs. Today, many, many people, and I see some of you here as well, in Somnium Space, they have full-time jobs by being, creating and, and participating in this virtual economy, which actually is growing really fast. So what is actually a real future of the immersive metaverse? In my opinion, it is a digital place enhanced by virtual reality and truly owned by its users, allowing people across the globe to be socially active and economically independent while utilizing tools for creativity, innovation, and without any central authority. I believe that within the next 10 years, the majority of human population will be using augmented or virtual reality headsets for the most part of their waking hours conducting business, creating digital and real value, or simply being social with each other. You know, we have concerts, we have gallery openings, we have shows, we have everything, and people are socializing from all over the world every day. You think I'm crazy, you really might think I'm crazy, and I actually do hope you think I'm crazy. And that's great, that's okay. But think about mobile phones 15 years ago. Who would have thought that we will be staring at our screens 100 times per day spending hours and become completely dependent on this amazing technology. It is an amazing technology. With virtual reality, it will be the same, but also very different. Virtual reality, VR, needs your attention. It mimics and enhances our reality, but making it more immersive, real and open for anyone. Wow, right? Can you believe when you were looking at that person's avatar, right when you are looking at its arter's avatar there's so much more advanced than that they look just like people i'm going to be showing you picture after picture after picture to show you how it's gradually moving in that direction so remember I'm going to just go back to our Wii games where we were playing tennis and bowling and all these different things and you would have a little two-dimensional 
avatar that was bowling for you and you're playing tennis and, and different things like that until now you actually feel like you're there. You're seriously bowling. All the sounds, everything that you see, you're part of all of this. So you're actually joining the social media. You're actually joining the virtual reality and becoming a part of it. Because of the sounds and your imagination. Be careful because your imagination can lead you astray. It is very clear in scripture. I'll be closing with many of those scriptures so you can hear them. So it says here, is a virtual reality metaverse based, this is based on for him, and he talked about a blockchain where you can actually buy things and own them in the metaverse, right? And it says it's decentralized economy, our future. So he's seeing the future as we're all part of this net, this internet, this virtual reality life, because it's already happening. Even though they're just kind of dripping it in and say three, they said 10 years, and then they're saying three to five years, right? It, they already have it. So it's just going to get you used to living um, with these on. And if you see them, they kind of look like full on God. They're pretty big, but I bet you not even in just moments, they will be very much smaller. They'll be more sleek, right? And then all of a sudden they'll be like, who knows, maybe you're going to have like a lens over your eye and you're ha going to have these hearing things, a room where everything's going to be like that for you. So you don't even have to really put on these headsets anymore. Just watch, wait and watch. And it talks a little bit about him. So he's seeing these things as progressing pretty quickly. And he's right quicker than he, he's even probably imagining since he's been a part of this for a while. And the avatars definitely don't look like the ones that you've seen that he was using. And I can't even believe it. It was 2021. Now we're going to be looking at, well, this one's called the insane future of the metaverse explains simply she does a really good job and it says a little bit here before we start that it says the term metaverse refers to a virtual reality space in which users can interact with rendered environment and other platform users let's see what she has to say now, the metaverse is not a new term. It was first introduced in 1992 in this novel called Snow Crash, written by Neil Stevenson. He highlights a world where people want to escape the governed physical world and go into a virtual world that's decentralized and they have more control in. The definition of a metaverse is a virtual reality space in which users can interact with a computer generated environment and with other users. It's basically a shared digital universe in which we can take on whatever personality we want and collaborate together, work on projects, and go to fun events. The idea is whatever you would normally do in the physical world, you can now do that in the digital world. This is a concept we've been working on since the early emergence of the internet. We had social media, virtual reality, and these are all early attempts of creating shared digital experiences, much like Second Life. Zuckerberg explains the metaverse as the internet, except you're actually inside the internet. So let's say you're on the internet and you're shopping. The metaverse actually takes you to the actual shopping center where you can actually look around in a 3D environment and see what you want to put in your cart. So instead of looking at a 2D screen, you're now in a 3D environment. The reason the metaverse is gaining popularity right now is because technology is innovating at a rate where the metaverse is actually a realistic thing. And that is because VR headsets and Oculus are becoming so technologically advanced that they're starting to feel like real life when you put your headset on. The difference with the metaverse is that it's an immersive world where you're not confined to just that tennis court. So let's say you're playing tennis with a friend and you want to go to a concert afterwards. The metaverse makes this possible by allowing you to have a shared continuous experience from the tennis court all the way to the concert. Your avatar in the metaverse will be much like your profile pictures on social media right now. It'll be a 3D representation of what you want the world to perceive you as. Now your avatars in the game or the fantasy metaverses may be a little bit different. Maybe you want to be a dragon. Maybe you want to be your superhero. The choice is up to you. And this is the fun part of the metaverse where you get to choose how you want to be perceived in the different metaverses. Now, the metaverse was already bound to happen, but because of the pandemic, it really sped up innovation because it allowed, or I guess it forced people to become more comfortable on Zoom. So we are seeing Zoom meetings, Zoom weddings, Zoom hangouts. So 
people becoming more and more comfortable on the internet naturally converts to people becoming more comfortable in the metaverse once the technology allows. So once we're able to be on our phone, scroll on our phone and go on the metaverse, much like we do right now with social media, that's when it will become a huge thing. Okay, again, what? You know, you start to question all these things. I think that we can look at it this way. It could it be actually real, at first seem all oh, wonderful and great. You can make an environment where there's no sickness and people aren't suffering and you can run away from the reality of this life, right? And then all of a sudden things go crazy dark inside the metaverse. And you're so addicted, maybe you take off your goggles, take off your headsets they're calling it right? Take off your headsets and join back in reality because everything seems so real. Have you ever been over in soaring over California? Now, this is years ago. I went on soaring over California, California Ventures, right? And it kind of makes you feel like you're hang gliding, right? And you can smell the orange orchards and the wind is blowing. So you're having all these different feelings. So you almost feel like you are, you know, flying over these hills and valleys and you know those kind of things so imagine what this will look like when you just step into the internet and become a part of a game right they, that you can actually be be a part of these really popular games that are all consuming and people are buying you know spending so much money on these games and you're not any, even going to imagine in, in the hundreds and thousands of dollars not engaging in real life they are stuck inside these games so you have to be super, 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 super careful when they're introducing all these new things to you that is going to be, wow, people are thinking, wow, the flat, we're bored with the flat two-dimensional, so let's make it three-dimensional. Let's make it lifelike. Let's make it like holograms and being a part of all this stuff that's not really w real, but you're creating that world in your imagination. Be careful. Your imagination will lead you astray. I'm saying it again. Now, what does this have to do with transhumanism? It says the transhuman roots of the metaverse. Why wouldn't it be part of that? It says the metaverse will allow people to be anyone, any gender, any race, any species, right? Virtual bodies put in transhumanistic ways, right? So here we are. As the name implies, the goal of transhumanism is to transform human beings into superbots through technology. Like all delusional ideas, the end result will be destructive, right? Disastrous, disastrous. Now, I want you guys to think about all this stuff as you're seeing this stuff start being introduced and being in three to five years, they said. Uh, and the person on TED Talk said, um, Arthur said it was going to be 10 years, but Jessica said it was going to be three to five years. So what is it really going to be? Um, there's going to be so many pictures here as we're talking, so I want you to see a lot of this. Now to wrap things up, so all these links will be below for you. You can look at the whole TED Talk. You can look at the one that we were talking about with Jessica when she says the insane future of the metaverse. You'll be able to see this other one on transhumanism, the roots of the metaverse, right? Transhuman roots of the metaverse. And then you'll be able to look at the one here um, that's just um, talking more about the transhumanism and virtual reality are a dangerous duo and that is absolutely true also we're going to be looking at some of these scriptures here and i'm going to go ahead and, and talk about your imagination will lead you astray because so it's going to be all consuming and your everything's going to be about creating in your imagination this perfect world or going within these games because you want to be a part of these games, right? You're going to be creating things in this space and inviting other avatars into it. And you're going to be surprised. It might seem wonderful at first, but how all-consuming it's going to be. And if it's not already hard enough to log out, to click out, to shut your devices down, can you imagine when you become a part of it? So it says in Genesis 6, 5, and God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continuously. 
says about the same thing in Genesis 8 as well. And then Jeremiah 3. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the thorn of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord. To Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil hearts. So you're supposed to turn for those kind of things. And then Jeremiah 7, there's a lot of Jeremiah. But they hearkened not, not inclined their ear, but walked in the counsel of and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. So they're going back instead of leaving those former things behind. And then Jeremiah 9, But have walked after the imagination of their own heart, and after Balaam, which their fathers taught them. Satanic things. Be careful. Jeremiah 11, yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ears, but walked every one in their imagination, in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore, I will bring upon them all the works of their covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. So they did not follow his commandments. Jeremiah 13, the evil people which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their own heart and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. Jeremiah just keeps going on, but it's going into the New Testament next. Luke 1, he hath shewed strength with his arms. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Do you hear that? Romans 1. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts was darkened. These are all things that have to do with your imagination. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians 10, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen to that. So be really careful. Be really careful. I know some people were saying that it's a kind too much of a blatant statement that it doesn't cover everybody that's on the internet. And what I'm saying is you can be swept away by technology. It can be all consuming, all captivating, really quite bewitching, right? It could be a sense of if it's encaptioning all of you and you're escaping from this reality into the net, into the metaverse, what would that be in front of a holy God? Be careful because your imaginations will lead you astray. I hope this helps you. Until next time, thank you.